Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Bryce Peterson. I'm one of the reference librarians here at Rosemont. Now, unfortunately, we can't be meeting in person to go through all the library resources today, but luckily, uh, many of the resources that we provide in the library are accessible remotely, uh, which means you can log on from home, uh, from anywhere else off campus, and access a lot of these databases and still do your research. Again, unfortunately, it means you won't be able to access the books we have in the library, um, but I'm still going to take a minute to show you a bit of how the catalog works so you're not missing out on any of that information when you do return to campus. Um, but we'll spend the bulk of our time today going through some of the online databases so you can see how those work, um, the best way to perform searches, how you can use those databases to help you refine your topics as you're doing research, um, and then eventually to get further into research, how to evaluate those sources, how to find what's most useful and to avoid the stuff that's least useful. Now, I will say that um, in good times, you can access most of what you need just right here through the library website. But there are times when you might need to go beyond the library website to other web resources. Um, and in particular, you, know, you might be tempted to go to places like Google or Wikipedia to find research to use. Um, what I will say about Google and Wikipedia is that you know, a lot of professors and librarians will rightly tell you that you can't rely on sources you're finding through uh, the open web, through Google. But when you're at the stage of just deciding what your topic is going to be, uh, you're still racking your brain to figure out, huh, what do I want to write about? Um, is there enough information out there on this given topic? You can sometimes turn to Google and Wikipedia just to get a sense of what is out there and what information is out there. Now, I will also show you in a second another database that we subscribe to that can um, sort of perform a similar function to help you determine what information is there on your given topic. Uh, it's uh, basically an encyclopedia online like Wikipedia, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, so basically, this is the library website. This is how things are laid out. I want to remind you, first and foremost, that you can always reach out to any of the reference librarians um, even though the library is not open right now, we are answering emails as quickly as we can. And there's information right here on the home page about how to get in touch with us. You can either email reference at rosemont.edu or fill out this uh, online Ask a Librarian form that we have. Uh, it's just a basic form that you can fill in with your information. And, um, you know, we're standing by and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And, you know, we understand that things are a little difficult right now. So we're, we'll do our best to help you as much as we can uh, in tracking down things online that you can access remotely. So those are some things that you want to remember that you can always reach out to us for help. And again, when we're back on campus, you know, you're welcome to come and talk to us anytime in the library to get more help with your research or, you know, anything else you might be working on. Um, there are, of course, certain things that you'll need to turn to your professor for. Um, if you're having certain issues about determining the scope of your topic, what might be appropriate for this particular assignment, um, what the particular requirements of this assignment are, um, you know, those are obviously questions best directed to your instructor. But we'll also include some links alongside this email, uh, alongside this video, um, the email of, uh, you know, things you can access online. Uh, to help you as far as research guides that we have put together in the library. Um, so if you find that you have other questions um, that go beyond the scope of what we talk about today, you might be able to find them in our research guides. So again, on the homepage for the library, we have here this search box that sort of breaks down all the different um, areas you might want to start with your research. So uh, it's always a good idea to come here first. So this breaks things down into a few different boxes. We have catalog, reference resources, journals, and research guides. Now, the catalog obviously is um, searching the books that we have in the library. Um, so you might be tempted to sort of discount that now, given that you won't be able to take out any of the books in the library, but it does also index some eBooks that are available online. Um, so it's not a bad idea just to try searching here and see what comes up. Again, it's good it's a good practice to get into in general to get comfortable searching the catalog so that when we are back on campus, you are still using the books that we have. And again, the eBooks that will be listed here. So you can always just type in any search you might have and see what comes up. We'll try something general like education and see what the catalog pulls. Now, um, when you're searching in our 
catalog online for books because obviously we have fewer books in the library than there are you know websites on the open internet or articles in databases you want to stick to more general terms um, now obviously education might be way too general but for the sake of demonstration I just wanted to put that in so you could see what's here um, and it found over oh, almost 3,000 titles actually and again this is searching not only books we have but journals we have in the library and ebooks um, and for ebooks or things that have electronic resources attached to them you'll see in the in the list there's this thing here URL link um, and that will often link you to directly to the ebook online. Sometimes it's just like a sort of description of the book in the Library of Congress's website, um, but often that'll give you the ebook. Another way to find ebooks is if you click up here for a new search and say you want to do a power search, you can limit your search results here uh, in many different kinds of ways. So you can pick format. Um, Actually, type is more useful for this. So this gives you all the different kinds of things that we include in our library, from AV equipment to records and reference books and slides. Obviously, some of these will be more useful to you than others, but um, just know that that option is here. Also, location, if you're looking for things just in the children's book collection or just in the African-American collection or alumni collection, you can limit all of those things here when you're performing your search. Um, I know all these search boxes can look a little underwhelming and maybe we'll get more into how search boxes like this work when we get to the databases, but I wanted to show you basically how the catalog is set up so you're a little more familiar with that um, once we do get back into you know, checking out books and life as usual in the library. So that's the catalog. Now back to the library homepage. There's a second tab for reference resources. This links you directly to that other database I was talking about, Credo Reference. Um, which is uh, sort of like Wikipedia in that it's an encyclopedia online. Um, the benefit of using Creator Reference is that it's a resource we pay for. There are editors who are always working on it to maintain its accuracy. It's pulling from other reputable encyclopedias that are published uh, in print and online. So it's, um, you'll find it has a bunch of different sources linked to each topic. Um, and this can be another great way to sort of figure out what um, your topic could be if there's enough information about your topic, um, and also to help you find good search terms related to your topic. Because when we get into the databases, it's gonna be trickier and trickier to find the exact kinds of articles you need for your topic. Uh, and it's good to go in there armed with the right search terms. So, you know, we tried searching just education in the catalog, which showed us 3000 results. This is way too many to go to. So you need to know how to distill the information down into a uh, set of key terms that lets you search for the best available articles and resources. Now you notice this page popped up when I clicked that link. This is because I'm accessing this database from off campus and you'll see this anytime you try and access one of our databases from off campus. If you are off campus and trying to log in and you don't see this and say you get to Credo just by googling it, the risk you run is that you won't be accessing the materials that we particularly subscribe to through Rosemont. So you want to see somewhere on the website that it says Rosemont College or access provided by Rosemont College or that you're logging in through this. And the way to make sure that you're doing that the right way is just to always use the links that we provide on the library website as opposed to Googling, say, the name of a database that we're going to be looking at. Um, because you want to make sure that you're accessing the things that we pay for um, because otherwise you might not have access to the full range of information in each of these databases. So you want to make sure that this pops up. It'll ask you just to log in with your Rosemont uh, email address and password. So let me type in mine here. It might take a minute to authenticate and then it'll log us in. So let's just give that a second. Tight. Here we go. So now this is Credo Reference. And again, you'll see at the top of the page here, it says uh, Rosemont College. So that's lets you know that you're getting access to the information that we subscribe to ourselves. And again, pretty simple. It's a big old search box here. You could type in terms. Um, honestly, it's also a good way if you have no idea where to start, you can 
look at these popular topics that they list on the first page, you know, under health and medicine, all of these different topics you might be interested in, under history, all these different topics. This can give you a good idea where to start if you don't have um, a good starting point for this particular research assignment. Maybe you want to write more about the California gold rush or the Zika virus or abnormal psychology. Um, these can give you some good suggestions and good starting points, and it'll, you know, break it down subject by subject here media and communications, biography, art and art history. And they'll highlight different terms at different times, so you might not see these same ones when you log in. Um, but anyway, we could try searching again for education here, and we'll see what it gives us. You see it pops down with some suggested terms. Let me show you that again. Education. Right. Um, Another way of kind of hopping around, it gives you some suggested terms you might want to search. Uh, and oftentimes it'll um, suggest things that are a little more specific. So maybe uh, higher education or Catholic education or public education, uh, ways of making it a little more specific. Uh, a lot of these pages will also include a topic map on the right hand side. These are all just sort of different ways of visualizing the topics here. Uh, you know, the suggested terms list, the topic map linking to other related terms, higher education again, educational psychology, ways to get more specific or potentially less specific, things that are related here. Uh, here on the left, it'll start to break things down by individual articles and images. Now, even though it says articles here, I don't want you to think that these are articles that you could use as primary research in a research paper. These are things pulled from other encyclopedias and dictionaries online. Now, some of them might be more specific, so we see this first one that pops up is an article titled Education. It says it comes from the New Americans, A Guide to Immigration Since 1965. So that already tells us a bit about what this article will be about. Even though it's just titled Education very generically and very broadly, it comes from this particular encyclopedia reference resource about immigration. So uh, it stands to reason that the article here is going to discuss education from an immigration point of view, or in particular talk about immigrants' education and things like that. Again, that can give you an idea. Maybe I want to hone this uh, topic down a little further and talk about education as it relates to immigration or immigrants. Uh, again, you can look a little bit further. Education in the Romantic era from 1760 to 1850. Education in the Encyclopedia of North American Indians. Uh, education from the Reader's Guide to History of Science. So this is all from different points of view. And this is going to be an important thing to pay attention to also when we get into the other research databases. You want to pay attention to what, where the sources are coming from, not just what the title is or um, what the little description at the bottom here is, but where is it coming from? Because that's going to tell you a lot about what potential bias might exist in a given article or what point of view it's written from. Um, so you won't cut yourself off guard if you start reading something and you say, well, why are they so focused on this one particular issue? Or why does it seem like they're arguing this one particular point or this uh, one particular cause? Uh, and a lot of times it has to do with where the information is published initially, because these databases are pulling things from all over and bringing it sort of under one big heading. So you have to pay attention to where they were published initially. And you can do that just here by looking at from this encyclopedia, from this guide, from this dictionary. Okay, so as for these articles themselves, see how it looks. Click on the title here. Again, another way to kind of hop around and find other subjects or related terms. It has some related searches, ways to kind of find more information, see if there's enough information on your topic. Here again, it'll, you know, like I was saying, looks pretty much like a Wikipedia page in that it's an encyclopedia online. So it's a fairly uh, brief article, which might include different statistics, um, different headings. Um, you know, at this early stage in your research, it's very fair to just sort of hop, uh, skim, hop around in an article, as opposed to, um, you know, reading the whole thing up front. You, know, you might want to look at things like headings or subheadings, uh, the introduction to each section or the conclusion to each section. That'll give you a better sense of um, what in particular might be talked about in a given section or a given article without having to read through the whole thing. Another tool that I like to use often when looking through um, longer articles online is the search tool um, to search within a web page or within a document. So depending on what kind of system you're on, if you're on a Mac, it's Command F or um, a Windows device, it's Control F. So and type that in, and then it pulls up a search box at the top of the page. Um, depending on the browser you're working on, this might look a little different. 
And then you can search within this page for certain um, other terms, maybe more specific terms. So maybe we're looking for um, education as it relates to certain family units. Try searching for family in here. And here it's going to highlight 13 instances where family shows up in this article. And we can hop through to see. So we see families here. Maybe we want to read this section because our term searched uh, here. Again, family, family. With a term like family, you might want to be careful because it could uh, rule out things that should be included. Like we searched family singular, but right here before it, families showed up. Uh, and you see it didn't highlight that as part of our search. So maybe we want to also try families or different variations of any given term. You can see it found 10 instances of families versus 13 of family. So we can hop through that way too. These are all just different tools you want to kind of keep in the back of your mind as you're going through your search. So let's exit out of that. Uh, and then down at the bottom of each of these articles, it'll usually include links to um, the bibliography and the sources that this article cites. And this can be really, really helpful. If you find an article in this Credo reference database that is on your exact topic, and you know, you might be able to find that, uh, and that could you know, be a good sign if you're writing on that topic that there's going to be plenty of information for you to go on because you don't want to make it too hard on yourself at this stage. Um, the bibliography is a great resource because it's basically the research that has already been done for you. So whoever wrote this article for this encyclopedia, these people listed down here are the authors, they've done this research. And what's nice is that it links to, uh, it says this e-journal portal link at the end of each one. And this will link back to Rosemont's website. I'll show you how that pops up to search whether or not we have access to that article or that um, journal. So let's hop back over here. This was uh, by the author Bailey, Dominican American ethnic slash racial identities and the United States social categories in the journal called International Migration Review. Now, this is pretty much the citation as you will have to write it for your final paper. Um, so it's good to pay attention to that. Um, but it's searching for this International Migration Review Journal. So when we click this link, it pulled up the Gertrude Kistler Memorial Library Electronic Journal Locator. Again, you want to make sure that it says something like Rosemont or Gertrude Kistler up here. If it's not showing up right for some reason, uh, you can get in touch with us and let us know. Uh, and here it found that, yes, we do have access to the journal, International Migration Review. Uh, and it tells us the dates that we have access to, so from 1996 to 2014, and it's located in this database called JSTOR, Arts and Sciences 2. Now, you, you'll, you might be familiar with JSTOR. There are lots of different subsections of JSTOR. This is Arts and Sciences 2, but if you click on this link, again, it will open up a new page linking you directly to that journal in that database. And again, because we've just followed a few links here, I want you to pay attention to access provided by Rosemont College Library at the top of the page here. Again, that makes sure that you have access to the things that we subscribe to. So here, International Migration Review, the coverage again, who it's published by um, on behalf of the Center for Migration Studies of New York, the history, blah, 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 all of that. And now it gives us the issues. So, you know, it's very helpful in that it finds us this article, but uh, this journal rather, but it doesn't link us directly to the article. So if we want to find this article itself, we might have to go, okay, this appeared in 2001 in uh, volume 35, issue three. So now let's click back over here and go to the 2000s. We can find 2001, which right is volume 35, number three and open that particular issue. And then here we go. There's the article we were looking for, Dominican American ethnic slash racial identities and the United States social categories. And from here, we can click this to open it and read the article itself, which is a pretty long 32 page article. Again, on JSTOR, how this works is it gives you things like uh, subject terms on the left, an abstract, which is essentially a summary of the article. So you, before you deal with the article itself, you might want to read the abstract and see if it's really relevant to what your research is. Uh, same thing with these subject terms. They can give you a sense of how relevant it is. Um, and what I, again, like to do with a PDF like this or an article like this is maybe read the first couple of sentences, skim through some headings or subheadings, 
Um, and if you decide that you do want to access it, then you can click download PDF. You'll have to accept JSTOR's terms. And then it'll open the PDF in a new page. Gives you all of the information about the article on the first page, and then the article itself will follow. And again, from here, what you might like to do is search within it. So again, depending on the kind of browser you're using, you might see a search function here, or just do Control or Command F. And you can search again for those other terms. So maybe family. This found just two instances of family. Um, on JSTOR in these databases, these PDFs are usually searchable. Sometimes the PDFs are not searchable because they're just images, but this actually um, lets you search the text. Uh, but the highlighting can get kind of funky sometimes. So here it highlighted networks, even though family is right next to it. So that's just one thing to pay attention to. Uh, oh, and it's finding more as it's going on. Uh, in a way, my family, and you can do this for different terms as you go on and see uh, what your research is leading you to. So that's that. Now we skipped a little bit ahead because we got to straight to JSTOR from that article in um, Credo Reference. Um, but I wanted to point out this bibliography tool here because it can really take a lot of work out of doing the searching in those databases like JSTOR and OmniFile, which I'll show you as well uh, later on. What I want to say at this point, too, is that you know there are many paths to take when you're doing research, and there is no one right way to do it. So as you are doing research papers for this and other classes, research assignments of any kind, you might find that certain um, methods are more suitable to you. Uh, maybe you enjoy clicking around on different suggested subjects to get an idea of what you're interested in, things like these. Maybe you prefer to search and string together many different search terms, and we can show you a little bit more about how that works. Maybe you prefer to rely on um, things like this, these bibliographies to get a sense of where to go. Or maybe you prefer to skip Credo Reference altogether and go straight to JSTOR or OmniFile to do that heavy lifting um, research yourself. Um, and sometimes it's best to use all of these different tools in some kind of combination because you might find, you know, these same articles popping up in different places and in different ways. And sometimes you run the risk of missing a really good article if you only choose one particular path of searching. So it's good to engage in a lot of trial and error and in some iterative searching, you know, you try one thing, you go back, you try another thing. Maybe you combine different terms, you combine different searches, you click on different links here and there and see where they lead you. All this is to say that it's a good idea to start your research early because you never know when you might hit a dead end or when you might be overwhelmed with too many things to look through. So start early, play around with it, click on these links, use the tools that are provided to you in these different databases and um, really spend some time to see what works for you. So that's basically the Credo Reference database. Again, I think this is most useful in a way to refine your topic, to figure out what you're interested in in the first place, and then you can see, well, maybe I wanna tackle this topic from this particular point of view or from this more specific point of view. Uh, instead of education, how about high school? How about, um, even more specifically, you could think about high school education for immigrant communities or within immigrant communities. And there are ways to kind of link these terms together to make them more and more specific. And again, depending on the length of any given project or the parameters that your professor sets for you, um, you may have to make your topic more or less specific. Uh, and again, that's something that you may want to talk through with your professor uh, themselves to get an idea of how that works. Uh, so let's exit out of these pages and kind of back up back to the library website. So again, here we are on the home page. This is where we were starting uh, working through these tabs. So we did the catalog. We just did reference resources, which kind of then skipped a few steps ahead. Journals here, which links us back to that um, electronic journal locator. Uh, so... Um, we could search for a particular subject area here and see if we have journals on it. This is more useful if you know you're looking for a particular academic journal. Say you want like a particular study posted um, or published by a particular professional association or uh, newspaper or um, or academic journal. You could search for that here and find it. There are also these research guides, um, which are compiled by the library. So these are not um, 
These are not things that other databases or other people have put together. These are things that we have put together specifically for the Rosemont community. Um, and this lets you get a sense of different subject areas that we've covered and uh, different particular classes that we've covered. So you can also come here if you're having a hard time getting started and get some good um, information just on how to get going. There are a couple of good research guides for starting out. There's this library resources, How Do I? And another one further down, Where Do I Start? These can be very good just for figuring out you know, all the basics of your library research needs. So here I have a test or homework assignment and I need background information. I'm writing a paper, I need books, articles, all these things. And you can hop around different ways to find information on how to say find articles or books or online resources. And again, it links you to the information here for contacting us, reference at Rosemont or ask a librarian. And again, um, you know, I'll send along links to these research guides to your professor so that you have access directly to these if you need to kind of come back here and refresh your memory on certain aspects of say finding articles or um, accessing these different databases. This contains a lot of good information about all that. Okay, so those are the research um, the re research guides. Now back to the library website. Okay, so we've worked our way through these tabs. Now on the left here is a link to online resources. Again, you know, because of our current circumstances, it makes sense to stick primarily to these online resources. Although you might certainly um, be able to find eBooks through our catalog, as I described. Um, and depending on your local library access, you may or may not be able to um, get books from your local library or at the very least to access ebooks or other databases through your local library. Uh, if you do need help kind of navigating your local public library's resources, you can always reach out to us and we'll see if we can help um, break down some of the information for you, um, depending on where you live and where you're accessing these resources from. Um, so feel free to reach out to us in that regard. Um, but it is true that for most research you're doing at this level, you'll be able to find uh, a great deal of information just in our online resources that you can access remotely. So clicking on that link brings us to this page, breaking things down again by electronic databases. So these are things that we pay for and subscribe to. Uh, research websites, which are is a sort of curated list of websites uh, elsewhere on the internet that again are freely available to anyone, but um, we have sort of culled together this list uh, of websites that are more reputable. So you can still, um, so you can rely on these a little bit more for accurate information than you would any old website you'd find through Google or Wikipedia. Um, it still goes without saying you need to be vigilant about the information you're consuming online and on the web and you wanna pay attention to the sources that are um, contributing to the information, um, you know, to potential bias that you might find in other online resources. So even though we provide these links, um, you still want to pay attention to what's out there and, and you know what kind of misinformation can be out there. And then again, links to those research guides and tutorials that I was just showing you that we put together about how to access library resources. So that's all those available for you. What I really want to focus on right now is this list of electronic databases, because this is going to get us really deep into the research that we're doing for this assignment. So at the start, you'll see uh, option to break it down by subject or alphabetically. I'll leave it by subject for now so you can see how um, things kind of spread out among different categories. You'll probably end up spending most of your time in the reference and multi-subject databases that we provide. And I'll scroll down and show you some of those. So the reference databases are things like that Credo reference um, database that I was just showing you. These are things that are going to give you good background information. Uh, information like encyclopedias, dictionaries, maps, almanacs, statistics, uh, data, things like that that are um, good for background um, but will not necessarily give you in-depth analytical or empirical research. Um, so you can certainly use these as you're getting started with your assignments or if you need particular information, um, particular statistics, say from the Statistical Abstract of the United States or sports in America or um, the Encyclopedia Britannica, etc. cetera. Um, but again, it's good for background information and for determining your topic and the scope of your topic. Now, these multi-subject databases are the, the big ones. These are the big guns. This is where you're gonna find most of the research that you'll be doing. Um, and the 
biggest ones that we subscribe to by far are JSTOR, which you just got to kind of sneak a peek at here. It lists all the different uh, subject categories that are included in JSTOR. Um, and this OmniFile full text mega database. Uh, it's mega indeed. And here it includes a, a, a little bit of a list of what uh, OmniFile gives you access to. Uh, finally, there's Project Muse, which is a collection of over 400 scholarly peer journal, peer reviewed journals in all different kinds of subject areas. Uh, I will say that JSTOR is what they call an archival database. So JSTOR includes journals and periodicals going back sometimes even hundreds of years. Whereas OmniFile Full Text Mega includes much more recent information. So if you're looking for things that are being published, say, in medicine or health or science, um, things that are very current and that you need very current information for, OmniFile Full Text is probably a better place to start than JSTOR. If you're researching things uh, like literature or history or the humanities, um, where you might need historic sources, um, JSTOR can be a good place to go. Uh, long story short, there are lots of um, different rights restrictions on periodicals, on articles. So JSTOR doesn't get them until they're at least a few years old, but OmniFile gets them sooner than that. Long story short. Um, and Project Muse is uh, sort of in between. They uh, they go back to 1990, but they also have good um, current uh, coverage and they link to back issues in JSTOR for older journals. Uh, and then some other things you might want to browse through. Now, depending on your subject, you can also click ahead to these different uh, subject headings for different databases that we subscribe. So maybe you're interested in education again, since that's what we've been doing for our sample searches. You can click there. It'll bring you down to our education section. Uh, and these are two different education databases that we have access to that you might want to search in addition to the multi-subject databases that I showed you at the top. And the same could be said for English. You know, you might want to look through these individual resources on English literature or history or the humanities in addition to the multi-subject databases. And, uh, you know, depending on your research, this is something that, you know, a librarian can help you one on one with to figure out what the best place to look is. But I would say start with the multi-subject databases and then work your way through things that are more specific. Uh, so start with something like JSTOR or OmniFile and then get more specific from there. So since we had a sneak peek of JSTOR, let's spend more time on OmniFile and see what comes up there. So again, we're clicking the link provided on the library website. Since I logged in from that earlier session on Credo, it should remember that I have access here through Rosemont. Um, if I didn't, it would bring me to that login page again. Now here it's saying searching OmniFile Full Text Mega. Uh, it's a little confusing here because OmniFile is a, a database that we get through this company called EBSCOhost. So you could click here on choose databases and pick other ones that EBSCO provides to search through. So let's see, we're doing OmniFile Full Text, but maybe if we're doing something related to education, uh, we want to include APA psych articles or the ebook collection that we have through EBSCO. So we can check and uncheck different databases to kind of expand or contract our search here. And here it gives you a little information about what each of these databases includes. So education might be good for APA psych articles. So we'll search those three. When we do that, it'll reset. It doesn't really change how anything works. It just up here will say what you're searching. Um, now, again, depending on your search style, you might want to dig right in and start typing in terms and searching for things here. Uh, what I like about how EBSCO defaults is it gives you multiple search bars so you can link terms together easily and take out terms easily without losing track of what you've searched and what you haven't or how things are strung together. It kind of makes it a little more clear about how the search is work working and, and we can get into that a little bit more. But I also want to show you that it has all these search options set. Uh, below the, the search bar. And I kind of like to skip this for a second and come down here and set a few parameters. So one thing I always do is check off this. Also search within the full text of the articles. Now this will greatly expand your search. It'll give you many, many more results, sometimes too many. Um, but the good thing about it is that it 
doesn't just search, say, the title or the abstract of an individual article. It'll also search for these terms that you type in here within the text of the article itself. Now, that might seem obvious, um, but all of these databases operate differently in how they search. You know, when you search on Google, it's kind of pulling everything it can for your terms, and it's trying to um, make sense of it and give you the results that it thinks are most relevant. Uh, a lot of times that has to do with ad money and things like that. In a database like EBSCO, it's going to search, it's going to prioritize the search based on uh, where the terms appear in a given field. So, so the text of each search is broken down into these fields, which are the text of it, the author, the title, subject term, source, abstract, and then these uh, publishing codes. So if you search within the full text of the articles, it's going to give you a broader set of results because it's not just looking at the title, in other words. Now, um, there are more options here that I think are important uh, as your research goes on. Limit your results. So just as this is going to give us more results, these here are going to give us fewer. Uh, and the most important one is full text. So especially right now that we're all working from home and don't have access to interlibrary loan in the same way we would, we want to make sure that we have access to the full text of the article itself. Now, in EBSCOhost and in other databases, they don't always necessarily give you access to read the whole database, even though we subscribe, you know, access the whole article, even though we subscribe to the database itself. Sometimes it'll give you just the publication information, the bibliographic information. Uh, those kinds of databases are called indexes, and they can be useful for researchers who are just trying to track down an article, and then maybe you can use interlibrary loan to get it from another library or something like that. Um, but for now, you want to make sure that any thing that pops up in your search, you can actually read and access the whole thing. So that's what this full text box allows us to do. We can also check off this scholarly peer review journals box. This means that any article that appears in our results will have um, been peer reviewed or published in a peer reviewed journal. Essentially, that means that the journal has vetted the contents of the article. Before the article is published, it is um, evaluated by a committee or uh, a, a subset of experts in that particular field uh, who have attested to its accuracy. Um, now, this is not always a foolproof process, and uh, you know that might be a long story for another time. But basically, if you're looking for high quality research, you always want to make sure that you are checking off peer review journals wherever it appears in whatever database you're looking at. Now with a database like JSTOR, you won't see this box because everything in JSTOR comes from peer reviewed academic journals. Um, but in here, you might end up with things like uh, magazine articles or newspaper articles. Those are the kinds of things that aren't peer reviewed. Um, so depending on the search you're doing, you know, you might need those or may not, but um, for a research paper, you want to look for these peer-reviewed articles. Now here, there are more limiters you could deal with to figure out how you want to maybe refine your search. Um, you don't have to worry about all this too much just yet because all of these options will still be available to you after we do our search. Um, so now we can start typing things into the search box at the top of the page. So we could start with education. Now that gave us 3000 results in our catalog, which was already way too much. And uh, actually, let's just try this first and I can show you how many um, article results you'll get searching a term so broad. So oof, 583,296 results for searching education. Obviously, that's way too much for you to sift through, especially at this stage in your research, if you're if you're really kind of figuring things out as you go along. Like I said, even though we've done that search, the search bar stays up here so we can keep track of what terms we have. And all of those options to refine our results, you know, the things like the full text and the scholarly peer reviewed journals, though those are all still here. So we could take those off or add those in. We could change the publication date. So if we are thinking about current issues in education, say we want to really look at um, current issues in immigration and education as they relate to each other, we want to maybe move this dial way up and say just things that have been published since maybe the year 2000. And that cut out 
basically 100,000 articles. There's still plenty in here. Uh, so you can see how much of a, a difference these different uh, refined results make. Now, there are other options here. And again, this depends on your style of search and how you might like to hop around. Uh, you can click on different subject headings. Uh, so it can narrow things down that are just tagged with the, the heading education or psychology or history. You can limit it by the publication it appeared in, um, by the language it is in. So obviously most of these are going to be in English, but there are another, uh, a number of other ones in other languages. Uh, these have to do with the, the uh, specifically for that psychology database that we're searching, if it relates to um, young adults, middle age, uh, childhood, and it gives you those ranges and how it limits those down. Um, you want to be careful with some of these because um, these are sort of database specific, so this will only apply to the search we're doing in one of the databases we selected instead of all three. Um, and in parentheses, it's good to pay attention to. This is the, the number of results that will be left once you check this off. So if you check young adulthood off, it'll leave us with only 12,000 results, which is still plenty, but uh, something you should pay attention to. And again, it's showing you here the databases we're searching. Um, so we could start looking through here. I might want to type in another term. So let's do immigration. Now we could do immigration or immigrants. And here it gives you some suggestions. You might want to also do this, immigrants or immigrant. So we're linking these terms together now. So any article that will show up in our new search must include both the term education and either immigration or immigrants or immigrant. So these terms we're treating as interchangeable, but we're not treating these two as interchangeable. So education and one of these terms must appear in every article that comes up. So we'll change that and see what we get. Now that's down to 50,000 results. Again, probably too many, but we could maybe at this point turn to some of those subject headings. And again, these can be ideas for other things to search or other directions to go in. Uh, uh -huh, we were searching for families before, weren't we? So let's maybe check off families as a subject heading and update. And again, that should limit us even, even further. Now at 479. So this is much more manageable to go through. Again, 479, you're probably not going to be able to look at all of those articles themselves, but um, you, you should get some good results uh, in the first couple of pages. You can change how the results are displayed. So if you want just the newest articles, you could switch that around um, from relevance to newest. Uh, you can s we'll see how that looks. Now we switch to date newest. So now we're seeing that the term immigration or education is not showing up in the title, but here families is showing up in the subject. Immigrant families is a term, immigration, immigration. You see how these terms start to pop up based on how they're marked in bold face over the page. Um, let's say we want to look at this one and get some more information. So again, it gives you the info laid out pretty clearly, the title, who has written the article, where it was published, uh, when it was published. This is all the information you need for your citations. Uh, a link directly to the PDF, the subject terms, the kind of um, resource it is. This comes from an academic journal. So if we click on the title, we'll have access to this here. Again, it lays out all that information again here with an abstract, which like I said before, is basically a summary of the article. Um, it's a good thing to go through to see if it's relevant before you get any further. Uh, here it looks like it has it also in French and English. And again, uh, some more keywords. In, in this case, these keywords are author supplied. It notes that here. So you might want to look at these as other related search terms or related subjects. Um, on the right here, it gives you some tools that I think are useful in EBSCOhost, so you can add it to your folder. Um, it didn't look like that did much, but what that does is saves it to your account in EBSCO. So you see how it says sign in here? I'm not signed into a personal EBSCO account, I'm just having access through Rosemont. But if you set up an account and save things to your folder, it's an easy way to keep track of things that you're finding as you're going through, so you're not you know, doing 
multiple searches and then losing track of individual articles. So it's kind of helpful as a way to like um, remind yourself to look back at this article later just by putting it in your folder. But there are other ways you can go about accessing the article from here. You can print it, email it to yourself, save it to Google Drive. Um, you can get a citation for it with this little tool here, and you can see it breaks it down by different citation formats, APA, Chicago, uh, MLA. Um, now, these are usually pretty good, but it's always a good idea to double check these citations. Um, sometimes the formatting is a little strange depending on how the data is input, but this is again a, a good place to get started if you're trying to keep track of citations for a bibliography. Use the tools they provide you. Uh, and then also uh, permalink down here. What the permalink is, is basically a way to get back to this article without having to go through the search. So you look at the, the, the URL bar here and this link goes on forever and ever. You know, it would be impossible to kind of type that out or copy and paste it somewhere. So basically this is a shortened link um, that will always bring you back directly to this uh, article. And this is the kind of thing you might need to include in a bibliography or if you're trying to share an article through email or something like that. So those are things you want to pay attention to. Okay, so to read the whole thing, we've, we've gone through all this. Now we can pull up the PDF. And again, just like you know, we were saying in JSTOR, Oh, actually, this article comes from Project News, but is in EBSCOhost. So you see what I mean? There are many ways to get to the same information. If we had searched Project News, this probably would have also come up, um, but it just happened to be indexed in EBSCOhost as well. Um, again, all that information is here. Like I said before, you want to pay attention to where these things were published. This was published in the Canadian Ethnic Studies Association, um, which is a peer-reviewed journal because we've noted that we're only study, we're only searching peer review journals, but say you were a little unsure about what the Canadian Ethnic Studies Association is, maybe you want to just Google that name and go to their website and read more about them and see if they have a particular um, cause or uh, who's publishing them, or, you know, if they're housed at a particular university or nonprofit. Uh, that might seem a little uh, extra to have to be thinking about that, but uh, it's the kind of thing you want to keep in mind as you go keep working towards uh, higher level research. Um, especially if you're working on a very specific topic, you might find that most of your information, most of the articles you're citing are coming from the same publication um, because for certain topics, there really might just be one or two good journals on that topic. Um, so you want to make sure that you know a little bit more about it before you rely on any one given journal too much. It's good to have a variety of sources from a variety of of kinds of publications. So that's one thing to pay attention to as you're going through these sources. Now again, you know, this is a fairly long article. Um, we don't really know if it's going to be the kind of thing you uh, need just yet, but you can skim at this point and that's totally fair. Um, you can again look through the abstract, through certain headings or subheadings, the introduction the conclusions. I mean, think about when you're writing a research paper. Usually you lay out your argument or your thesis in the first paragraph or two, and then in the conclusion you'll sum up the claims that you've made and the evidence you've presented. So in an article like this, you might want to do the same thing and look at the conclusion here and see what they're talking about and then say, ah, yes, this sounds relevant. No, this doesn't sound relevant. It's also very possible that you know, you'll find a few articles that um, seem like they are generally about something else, but maybe there's a paragraph or two that is really relevant to your research. And uh, that is totally fair too. You may not have to actually read through the whole article if there's only one section that's relevant to you, uh, just as long as you're making sure that you're not missing out on any important context that's provided in the article. Um, so I think it's easy at this stage to get kind of overwhelmed by finding articles that are dozens, dozens of pages long, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to get through all of this? Um, well, take your time. You know, you're early in the process. Keep these articles aside by either saving them to your folder, or emailing them to yourself, saving them to your computer. And then one by one, you can kind of skim and um, pare it down and find what is useful, what is not useful. What's, which sections do you need? Which sections can you ignore? Uh, and that is just a practice that takes time to get used to. But again, it's another reason why it's good to get started early with this research. So you can engage in this kind of trial and error, see what works, see what doesn't work, and move on from there. Okay, so this is how this article looks. Now, um, 
like I said, it's easy to get kind of bogged down in EBSCO, and um, I think that's why it's important to have done the background research and to kind of have a better idea of your topic before you get into OmniFile or JSTOR or Project Muse, because you want to come in here armed with enough information to evaluate these resources and say, yes, this is working, no, this is not working. Um, you know, what terms am I going to search? Uh, what other variations of those terms do I have to consider so I'm not missing things? Immigration versus immigrants versus immigrant. Um, it's good to have all that information uh, sort of set up before you to have done that background work before you come to these databases so you're not finding yourself confronted with thousands of articles to sift through. So that is probably a very important Thing to keep in mind as you're getting started with your research, you know, to really map out these terms, to brainstorm uh, other subjects or topic areas you might want to search, and to be a little more prepared when you're coming in here because, yes, it can be overwhelming. Again, I want to remind you that if you find yourself kind of backed into a corner here or unsure of how to proceed or unsure of how to make sense of any of these tools, um, please do reach out to us, email reference at rosemont.edu bring you back to that page, or um, fill out the Ask a Librarian form. And this is a list of all the library staff. You should all be checking our email remotely as well. Uh, please do reach out to us if you need help sorting through any of these resources. And also remember to check the research guides that we have, because they will probably answer a lot of the questions you may have already. Uh, our guides and tutorials page where you can get to different library uh, guides and um, you know answer some important basic questions. There are some video tutorials here on different databases too if you find yourself a little lost. Um, so please you know, make the most of these resources. Uh, I know it's difficult working from home um, or working remotely, um, but it is really uh, a good benefit that we have access to all of these things online uh, that the college subscribes to and that can provide uh, a, a, a good chunk of the information that you need for your research. Um, again, it's unfortunate that you won't be able to use the books that we have, but do remember that you can access our catalog online remotely. Um, when we're back on campus at some point, you can um, use that to find books that we have in addition to ebooks that are available online uh, and other resources. And uh, again, reach out if you have any questions. Um, we'll include some links alongside this video to get you started. And um, good luck, and I will be in touch.